Good morning and welcome to this Student Hub Live orientation from the School of Education, Childhood, Youth and Sport, or ECUS as we call them for short. We've got a great programme lined up for you today telling you all the things you need to know about your OU study area. Now, Today's session is part of a wider induction programme that the school are offering to students. And whilst a lot of the content here is essential watching for students of the school, everybody of course is welcome. And we've got a lot of sessions that are very, very broad and will appeal to many students beyond the school. So you're all very, very welcome to the session, which is a live interactive online event. So what we're going to do is tell you about all the things you know to start building your relationships with your tutor and ultimately set up a really solid foundation so that you can continue your learning journey really successfully. This year, the school is running a whole day event. So from now until the evening, we've got a whole programme lined up for you, which will include a lot of exciting things, such as student voice, tutor and tutorials, critical thinking, studying like an athlete. And we're going to have a debate as well, which I'm really looking forward to, about uh, whether the purpose of a university is to provide knowledge. So there's a lot of exciting things that we're going to be talking to you about th uh, throughout the day. Now, as I said before, this is a live online and interactive event. And so you at home are watching and hopefully chatting and completing some of the interactive voting tools. So you'll see there's a map. We'd like to know which area you're studying and which level. But bringing all of your conversation into our session today is HJ and Sultana. We've got a range of people on our hot desk feeding in your chat, listening to what you're saying and talking to you and providing you with more information. So welcome to you both. How are you today? I think we're all well and happy and ready to go. Excited as well. <laughs> yeah, there's loads of people in the chat. People have already started talking about our debate on, uh, tonight on Twitter as well, which I'm really interested in. A lot of good points on there. If you want to join in too, just go at Student Hub Live and uh, we'll have a look at those comments later on. But there's loads of new people in, which yes. is fantastic as well. So We have a lot of people studying the module E102 as well and they're all excited. Everyone's got their module material and they're ready to go. And it seems we're very cold as well this morning. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting ready and defrosting before uh, he's ready to start <laughs> and uh, Philip has also made a little start on her module materials which is yeah. good she's hoping to stick to the study planner though but mm -hmm. she's had a little delve in and I think uh, a lot of us are ready to do that and excited yes. as well Oh, it's very exciting being an OU student, especially that first year. And I hope that those of you who are just starting out really cherish these moments where you're looking forward to everything, snuggling up in autumn and reading your study materials. It really, really is a fabulous journey. And for those of you who have been studying for some time, do share your advice with others, um, because as we all know, there are plenty of hints and tips that you can uh, use and share to make your studying more effective for you, because there's no right or wrong way of doing it. Now, we're going to start today's programme um, with uh, some content from our um, uh, Deputy Heads of School, Associate Heads of School. Um, so I'm welcoming Eric and Tyrrell and Liz. Welcome to the studio. Thank you, Karen. Now, you've been spending a lot of time preparing this session today, but I wanted to talk a little bit more broadly for students because many students will meet their tutors, as we know. They'll yeah. read the module materials. But you guys, the Associate Heads of School, are doing a lot more strategic things for our students, and some of that's included in the programme today. So Eric, I wanted to ask you first about innovation because we've got a session a little bit later about how the school is really making a difference over, over the world. Yeah. Tell students what they need to know about innovation and why that's so important for the school. Yeah, Thanks, Karen, and um, good morning to all our students. One of the reasons why the role, this role was created in our school was to take innovation um, to our students. So we make it, we bring it back to our curriculum and also to all of the international development work that we do. So a typical example is this um, event that we're having, which is part of a much wider induction program that we have for students. So we're exploring ways in which we can deliver more effective tuition through Adobe Connect that we have. But also what we're doing as part of this induction program is to run webinars, which gives students a good taster of what they can be looking forward to when they start um, um, next week. So that's one of the things that we're doing. Also this year, one of the things that we've introduced this year is what we call the subject websites. That is a hub where for each program area in our school, I mean, different faculties have different arrangements, but in our school, what we've done is each subject area or each program area. So there's one for um, childhood and youth, there's one for early childhood, there's one um, for education studies primary, there's one for taught um, postgraduate, and there's one for 
sport and fitness. These are all subject um, websites which are dedicated to supporting students. So a lot of the resources that we have for this induction program and a lot of resources that will support them throughout the program, which are outside the core material, are all hosted there. These are some of the innovative ways in which we're looking to develop um, our relationship with students and also to support them. And underlying all that is to help them to build that learning community that will provide them that sort of success and support all through what their learning journey. Perfect. Now, some students have said, we've heard from Sultana and HJ, that they're already set up and they've started looking at their module materials. Is this something they should be looking at now? Or when, when is it something that they might say, I need to go to my subject website and find out what's there? Yeah, I mean, this is the, the, what we did this year um, is to provide what we've called the Keep Warm act, um, um, activities. So as part of the induction timeline, we have identified key resources that students can actually start looking at in preparation for module start. Yes, we know there are always the early starters who will always dive into the study guide and start working through it. But what we've done this year as well is to provide extra resources that prepare students for that. And yes, and they are located on the um, subject website, but they're also located on the student um, induction timeline, which has also been introduced um, this year. Perfect. Tyrell, I wonder if we could um, also cover a, another important area, which is this whole idea of careers and employability, because the school is very diverse. Whether we've got primary teachers, um, you know, coaches doing sport and fitness, a lot of students are studying in this area with a view to do something different with their career. And you're involving students in many different ways with interactive options throughout the programme. So what is there about careers and employability that students might need to know from a strategic level? I think, um, actually, in some ways, I take it from, from the other end, and we were talking about this outside with um, one of our tutors who's going to be talking to students in a minute, um, that actually, I think sometimes uh, you can focus very much on a career, perhaps at the beginning, very strategically. And um, I originally, I think my first ever uh, official um, qualification was I was a lifeguard, and my undergraduate degree, I trained to be a journalist. Um, and so some of those things, particularly as a student who might be studying over six years, some of those um, specifics of what you might uh, want to do in terms of your career might change. But for example, we have a huge number of students who are studying our Education Studies Primary degree who clearly want to go on um, and do a PGCE and go into teaching. Um, but then we have students in our Youth um, Childhood and Youth Studies degree who may want to engage um, or may not be actually very specific about how they want to engage with children or young mm -hmm. people, but they're exploring those different options. Um, so we hope that the materials will allow students to get different perspectives, to understand global perspectives, so understand that they could have careers beyond the UK, um, and to think about developing a range of different skills. So students might come across learning journals, they might come across sort of professional development planning, um, at postgraduate level, students might be researching their practice in a way that they can then evidence they could got a specific skill set they can take um, into their future careers. So actually, we would tell students to, to just sort of engage in their studies as, as, as sort of proactively as possible. Many of our tutors come from work settings, either currently or have before, so they really understand the field of practice. Mm -hmm. So they're a really good way of building your relationship with your tutor is saying, why is it you've come to study? What is it that you want to get from it? Um, and then we do a lot of work with our careers um, advisory service. And for any returning students or any students who've been with us for a while, you have access to that service for three years after you graduate. So it's really important to remember it's there. Um, and that's another way of students, uh, they advertise jobs. You know, there's a range of different ways beyond the study materials that we support students with their long-term career goals. Well, right now, Tyrrell, 53% um, of our audience are new to the Open University, so we've got quite a lot of students who are, but, but also a large proportion who aren't. Most of the viewers right now are at level one, mm -hmm. um, and we asked them all what they wanted to do. So let's take a look at what they said. OK, so moving to management, f having fun, which is important, further Absolutely. study, teacher, lots of teachers yeah. don't know, expanding businesses. Sleep. Sleep, yeah, <laughs> recover, postgraduate career change, um, uh, all sorts of interesting things, specialist promotion, yeah, absolutely, trying to get a promotion, yeah. continuing mm. professional yeah. development, mm. civil service, learn lots. So there are mm. all sorts of very, very broad motivations here for being a student, and, and I guess this is something. Is it a challenge then to sort of try and incorporate such a diverse range of students with 
you know, welcoming them to the university and engaging them in activities. I think, I mean, it, it could be seen to be a challenge. I mean, to me, it's that diversity that makes studying with the Open University so exciting. Mm. So um, most of our five qualifications, sort of, or programme areas, as, um, as Eric has articulated them, um, have a number of core modules, but those modules are shared, because we do have a lot of uh, yeah. crossover between our curriculum, are shared. So E102, our students will be... Um, so the big, three biggest groups will be the students from the primary studies, will be students from the childhood new studies and students from psychology, as well as the mm -hmm. open degree. So it really gives students a, a really fascinating learning community to be a part of. Um, and E102 is the, the biggest module in the school. So it's one of the places where people really come together. Um, and, and as I say, they can hopefully learn from each other about how to be a, a successful OU student. And that's mm -hmm. our real primary aim is to support them to do that but one of the things that I've been reflecting on the last couple of days and and watching students brand new students to the OU get excited about this um, is if those students who are already on Twitter if you're not on Twitter it might be worth thinking about going on Twitter we don't do any of our core teaching on there so if you're not on Twitter if you're not on social media it doesn't matter but it's been really exciting to watch two things over the last sort of couple of days and I'm sure Eric and Liz have seen that too one is the beginning of the OU graduation ceremonies mm -hmm. and, and seeing our successful students success explain and, and success as is defined by our students as however they define it, um, getting whichever qualification they were aiming for and, and, and sharing that with their families, friends and, and us. And the other thing is um, people sharing the certificates that they've received in the, in the post over the last few days. And there's been some lovely stories, particularly of a postman that couldn't deliver one um, and, and wouldn't deliver it because he didn't want to bend the certificate, <laughs> but then said on the note, congratulations um, oh. on your OU degree, which is just lovely. Yeah. And there's a sort of sense of so much of the, the country knowing who the OU are and what we do and are about our amazing students. Um, but I think for brand new students, whether it's, I think the forums are it, it vitally important for your success, for, for sharing your practices, but things like Twitter as well, and each of our programme areas has a Twitter account that mm. people can follow. One of the things I know we'll be talking about with primary studies a little bit later is how students from such a diverse range can be really supportive and it's really wonderful to hear different mm -hmm. views from different mm -hmm. people studying the same modules. But also tutors are really important and Eric you mentioned you know that, that they have so much expertise, they're often practitioners in various fields and Liz you oversee many of the tutors. Um, how are they important in students' learning journeys oh, and what would you recommend <laughs> to new students about really making the most of that relationship with their tutor? I think Karen's an understatement that they're very important. Gosh, they are, they are the, the, the core to, to the experience, I think, that, that you will all have. Um, they're the first, they're the, the named person. I think that's the first thing that I would say. That's the first name that each of our students will have. Um, and, and that's what you'll all hang your hat on, um, is that person. And you'll be in a group, mm, maybe there'll be 20 of you, there could be, if you're post-grad, there'll be slightly smaller, there could be slightly bigger. But that's the person you're going to have your relationship with throughout the period of study and during that module. Um, that's the person who's going to talk with you, who's going to teach you, be that um, at tutorials, be that on tutor group forum, be that um, on on oh, on the, on live um, on online um, tutorials. So you're going to have that relationship with them, and you're going to get your feedback on how you're doing. So all the positives, all the good things that what you want to achieve from your module will be coming through that relationship that you establish. It's two way. I think that's what I think I want to emphasize yeah. this morning. It isn't a one way street. It's two ways. Mm -hmm you get out of the relationship what you put into it. Um, and when I was thinking about coming in here this morning, I was thinking distance, well actually, funny enough, RALs, when you think about it, you're all distance learners. Doesn't mean to say you're isolated. And I think that's the critical mm -hmm. thing. You are not isolated. You can be wrapped as tightly as you want in a blanket of support. You, it can be loose if you want it, if you're free floating and so on, that can be fairly loose. But if you want that support, you have as much support as you can possibly want. But you've got to invest something in that as well. So if you don't ask, sometimes you don't get. If you want more, you'll get more. Mm -hmm. That relationship with your tutor, your tutor reaches out to you. You also need to reach out to them. But the relationship is also built by the peer relationships that you establish with your other students in your own group with your tutor. But with our new te approach to teaching over the last couple of years, 
we also have then this wonderful um it's it's a much larger group your clusters we call them clusters um so whether it's clusters um whether there's 200 other students but you're going to have that sense of a very rich community mm. and i think that you you put into that the other person that i did what the group that i did want to mention to you were student support the student support team so you've got your tutor there who's going to do all of that teaching you've got your peers there to support you but you've also got the your colleagues in student support who are there to to support and advise and guide and reach for you they're an excellent source of support. In fact, Sultana, you're working in the student support team, aren't yes, you? Yes. And I hear you've got some questions on the hot desk for us. Yes, well, that's what we love. We always say anything in the chat goes, whether it's thoughts, comments or questions. And uh, uh, Nazmeen has a great question about uh, their studying uh, primary studies. They're doing their degree and they uh, initially thinking about PGCE. But what they're wondering is just being a primary teacher, the only route they can go down with doing an education degree or is there something else that you think uh... oh I would oh, say there's there is a huge amount yeah. um, and I think if particularly if you're just starting out in your primary studies degree you've got um, and a lot of our primary education studies students study full-time um, uh, and that's great but you've still got a plenty amount of time to kind of try different experiences so whether it's the summer breaks um, although it's a bit difficult to get that formal education experience but there's a, a range of different other things I'm looking to Liz as well, if you want to jump in. Yeah. But talking about the to careers advisors as well, about opportunities. Yeah, I mean, uh, students will be um, seeing a lot of a bit of the work that we do in the international development um, area, um, soon as well. And a lot of um, our practitioners working in that area have got that education mm. um, studies um, background um, as well. I mean, mm. it, it does lend itself easily to international development work, work voluntary as well, sector, voluntary community sector, sector mm -hmm. as well. So uh, as long as you're looking at sort of outside the classroom, you, um, yeah. being a practitioner Very in the sure. field, there the, are other opportunities. The career yeah. service are amazing because I think it's very yeah. common to very early on think I'm doing a named qualification yeah. Yeah. and then you think therefore the jobs are that mm -hmm. and actually sometimes yeah. you move along and you think I love interviewing people or I love actually yeah. doing this and yeah. you learn different things and different ideas don't yeah. you. Yeah. I spoke to the career service when I was doing my OU degree very early on and they came up with so many different mm -hmm. options yeah. in a ways I hadn't looked at mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think, you know, the sort of skills that you gain from being a successful OU student, you know, you've got to be an independent learner, you've got to be proactive, you've got to build relationships. For each module you start, you'll be building new relationships. There are so many things that, particularly in our school, where a lot of them um, are, you know, our studies about working with people, with, you know, whatever age group they are, that are so transferable and having, working with professionals um, in the career service to, to help you to reflect on those different skills and the bits that you do really enjoy yeah. and then try and focus those but don't shut things down at the moment yeah. would be my suggestion mm -hmm. and as you mentioned before some of your students are doing open degrees mm -hmm. and again there are links with psychology and various yeah, yeah. other areas of the yeah. university um sultana i wonder if i might just pick your brains because i've heard that the student support team are often a really good source of information advice and guidance mm -hmm. for students if they're sort of maybe thinking about different qualifications when do they often talk to you and, and when's a good time if students are thinking about these things i mean normally it's at, um they've done stage one um, when they're going into stage two they start thinking about what they'd like to specialise in what subject so um, they do tend to contact us around about one, once they've done got past their stage one um, levels and then they've got a little bit of more understanding of what they would like to get into um, we always refer them to the careers advisors as well um, and that we've that we've got a really tight-knit um, relationship with them um, and they're really, really good. We can refer them or you can go into the help centre and um, book a consultation yourself. And can I just say we've got forums booked, um, yes. both for the education, sort of general education uh, careers forum, which hopefully will apply to a lot of our students and it will be exactly those kind of conversations about the range of different things you can do once you've got uh, your qualification with the OU. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. I just want to ask what you're most looking forward to because you've all put so much work into today's programme. So what is your individual highlight that you think students must not miss? Eric? Um, I think um, the bit with the student voice. I think for me it's, it's going to be exciting. We're getting two um, students um, on the sofa one um, that is currently a student um, rep in our faculty and one that has just graduated last week actually who's landed an internship role with us as a social media 
um, person working closely with, with, with the school. I think that will be really exciting. As well as the um, information session from our library um, colleagues, because it's always, always very helpful. It's one of the key resources yeah. that the university offers, whether you're working into the fiscal structure we've got on campus here in MK, or you, you're accessing resources um, online. Excellent. No, I'm looking forward to that too. The library yeah. is brilliant. Yeah. Tara, what are you most looking forward to? I'm looking forward with great trepidation to the debate because I am leading <laughs> Have one... you done all your preparation? Um, yes, so <laughs> now I know from HJ that there are some things on Twitter I might find at lunchtime and I'm just having a look at some of those. Um, so I hope that goes well. I was going to bring my black spaniel as a... Um, as a, uh, yes. a friend, but we might have him on my side of the, the <laughs> team. And um, I'm really looking forward to the critical thinking session. I think um, students can get very kind of concerned about the term critical thinking, mm. and really we're going to talk about that in the debate a little bit, about sort of pulling that apart so people are a little bit less afraid of it. Um, and I think there's always things that you can learn mm. from those sessions. You'll glean something new, even if you feel quite confident about critical thinking. Yeah. Excellent. Liz, what are you most looking forward and to? I suppose, naturally, I'm thinking of, the, of Isabel and Kate's session on um, tutors and working with your tutor and getting to know your tutor. And I think, are they still doing a drop-in? Um, they are, yeah, yes. So there's the drop-in, Isabel and Kate. So both of them are very, very experienced tutors. Please ask questions. Don't sit there, just ask questions whenever they come on. They'll answer, trust me, they'll talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> behind the leg on the donkey. <laughs> and they'll also be offering um, a chance for uh, just a taster of what it's like to come into the online rooms uh, for that experience of, of, of joining and working online. So if you've got a cup of coffee and a sandwich at lunchtime, um, use it, equipment. pop in and say hello to them. The other thing that I'm that I'm really looking forward to because it's when I say left to field, it's not really, but it's it's not it's not along the lines, you know. Um, it's not about going somewhere directly. Is our international work mm -hmm. because that is its scope and it's and it is new thinking and it's using all of the skills that people have. Um, to, to work in different contexts and to develop again from that really new rich, rich um, approaches to work. There's so much we've got lined up. I'm really looking forward to the study like an athlete session where yeah, we've got yeah, a whole yeah. range of food and we're going to yeah. find out what's good to study <laughs> with and some great advice from the sport and fitness team. Liz Tyrrell and Eric, thank you so much. Thanks, That's yeah. a wonderful start thank to the day. Right, we're going to have a um, welcome now from the head of school who can't be with us today, but I've heard has been around in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, so let's hear what Steve has to say um, and then we'll be back with our next session where we're going to be looking at education studies. I'll see you in a few minutes.